Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Cream colored ponies and crisp apple Hello, Ali. Lovely to see you today, mate. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. <laughs> We've been looking forward to this for ages because we did Dave quite a few weeks ago now, and he he promised on your behalf that we'd we managed to kind of get you and Anna to do it, and now we've actually managed to you know land you and uh, got it out to get it we get it ready. So so far far away. Yeah, it's interesting because um, I'm not known for being overly emotional on the outside. Features, <laughs> but the the only two things that really make me emotional are the news or kind of real events or um or worship or thinking in that way so um, yeah and it's interesting because even thinking about these songs conjures up very strong emotion yeah. um yeah so i have to be quite careful because <laughs> i'm not going to lose it on this <laughs> <laughs> oh don't worry sweetie don't worry <laughs> um, but no it's it's interesting because you talk about currently but actually i mean i've had so many songs over the years so many songs cause i've been a christian for about 35 years that have meant so much to me but actually two out of these three have been fairly constant oh. and are hundreds of years old so i know i think it was you were talking last week weren't you about hymns yeah it was, I, yeah but i do think sometimes they've managed to get really good wording yeah kind of captured something yeah, so, yeah. okay so my my third one is um when i survey the wondrous cross oh, love that song and i think for me it is just a simplicity. It's not like I think about it. It's just, I just have to hear the words. Yeah. 
and they're so meaningful. Um, and I think there, are, I was looking at the words earlier and there are quite a few bits in there that really speak to me. And I think it's just that every line, it's very personal. Although it's a hymn, it's not talking about grandeur or, um, yeah. or splendor or anything like that, which most hymns are. It's, it's really um, just talking about that relationship between me and God. Yeah. And I love the essence of it, sort of the fact it knows you. So, you know, it talks about, forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my Lord, all the vain things that charm me most. I sacrifice them, and I love that, because whenever I get to that point, I just think about everything I'm proud of, and it just fades away. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like, actually, that's nothing. That, it, that All that I've achieved, whatever I like to think of that as being, it, it's just nothing. And then to go on to the see from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love, flow mingle down did air such love and sorrow meet or thorns compose so richer crown it just conveys um everything yeah. it can't be explained it can't be um yeah. simplified it, it is just what it is and every word of that um just sums up how i feel all the time whenever <laughs> whatever state i'm in yeah. when i when i listen to it um it just speaks to me so when i think of the cross I don't mean this in a sacrilegious way, but it doesn't really speak to me very much, the concept of the cross, because it feels historical and like a thing that happens, you know. But when I read this, it, it feels much more about that he just did it for me. Yeah. Rather than it being something that happened 2,000 years ago and, and, you know, the process of it doesn't come across in this. It's about the act. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, sends goosebumps down my spine every time yeah. I... Here. <laughs> yeah okay good start <laughs> it's actually really similar because it's amazing grace and i know this is coming oh, yeah. but i can't sing it without experiencing it again i think that's the thing in a way a worship song that i enjoy i can sing it and depending on what mood i'm in it will speak to me or not but these two hymns i can't hear them without it speaking to me whether i'm in a place of utter despair or joy or ambivalence or whatever so i think that's what sets them apart for me mm -hmm. every single time i sing them yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and i think knowing the story of amazing grace and who it was written by yeah. i find really compelling because you can tell us a story because a lot of people won't, won't know so yeah written um by um, Newton, not Isaac Newton, but in who was a slave trader, and I find that really fascinating that he he realised that his whole life had been wrong, um, and I just think, yeah, just that that when he's talking about the saved a wretch like me, it would have been very easy for him to feel that, and sometimes today we don't feel like wretches. It's not a very common word. We feel like we're all right actually. You know, we, we were okay before and we're okay now. But I think when I sing that, it, it reminds me of the fact that to God, all, all sin is the same. So the fact that I'm not a slave trader doesn't make me any less far from him Yeah. originally. Um, and I didn't have any less of a journey to come. Um, I also, this is, I love the, the comfort that this brings. Because where it talks about, "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear." And grace that my fears relieved because for me you know having my fears relieved is a good thing yeah <laughs> um and when it talks about through many toils sorry dangers toils and snares we have already come tis grace that brought us safe thus far and grace will lead us home just that ultimate confidence that everything we've been through if it wasn't for god we wouldn't have made it through so i think basically it goes back to the sort of footprints poem doesn't it god carried so you know grace in a way it's a concept but it was god that carried us through that yeah yeah god that's going to carry us through everything in the future um and i think particularly i mean there were there've been different situations um i mean one was where when i was pregnant with matthew they thought he might have cystic fibrosis oh really oh and we went to an emergency appointment in London and they were asking me if I wanted to keep him. Oh, <laughs> no. Found out that he might have it or Down syndrome. Oh. 
we, it's interesting because he was talking to me about that only yesterday because I, I told him about this decision that I was given. Yeah. And, and you know, that whole point, my life, the life ahead of me felt like it was going to completely change. And at that point, there was quite a period of time when I did not know what was going to happen and what the outcome was going to be. Um, and it's at times like that when you can't solve it. Yeah. You can't you can't find anything within yourself to deal with that situation <laughs> yeah um that you you can see god holding you through it and even whether it feels like that or not at the time when you look back you really know that he was in it in it all yeah yeah, uh, yeah there's quite a few situations like that where i just think yeah you know it, there's no other way to get through it yeah 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 um <laughs> but that reassurance that because he's done it before he's going to do it again so yeah. i think Someone who is a natural warrior. <laughs> <laughs> no, not you, Ellie, surely. <laughs> There's no situation that lies ahead that he won't do that for. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the thing. That's brilliant. Wow. Right, drum roll, number one. Yeah. Well, um, this is <laughs> I don't care. Someone else has already taken this. But no, it's, um, I can only imagine. Oh, really? Oh, it, excellent. Yeah, I can't sing it without absolutely losing it because it's I just i love that song yes yes i know what you mean yeah incredible. and I'll tell you a little story when i was before i was christian when i was a child i found the idea of heaven terrifying i was really really scared by it and i thought of it as being somewhere where you couldn't really think or feel and very isolated and, and very sort of otherworldly and yeah really really scary and th i had a book that i used to color in with different um each page had a different thing you, you drew. So it said, draw a vase of flowers, or it would say something. And one page you were meant to draw heaven. And I couldn't look at this page in the book. I was absolutely terrified by this page in the book. Because for me, the concept of heaven just felt so scary mm. that I just couldn't cope with it. And so when I became a Christian, it really transformed that into something where heaven was something to be anticipated, not scared of. Mm. Um, and so this for me, is kind of the completion of that experience really mm. just that sheer excitement of what on earth is it going to be like if you pardon the pun yeah. <laughs> and I... what what's that emotion Ali? What's the mo when you sing this song what emotion is the strongest one i know <laughs> emotion obviously is a, a thing for you and i that is not easy to express <laughs> anticipation anticipation it, yeah yeah anticipation and looking forward to which is the exact opposite of what I used to feel. Yeah, yeah. You know, just that. Because I, I'm an anticipatory person. If I've got a birthday coming up or something, I really spend a lot of time anticipating events and getting the joy out of thinking about them and then the joy of thinking after them. That's part of it for me. Yeah. And this whole thing about thinking about heaven and anticipating it brings joy now. Yeah, yeah. So, nice. I, yeah. That's fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much, mate. Really love your choices. Uh, and love those songs. Thanks ever so much. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the
is before me I can only imagine I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel Will I dance for you Jesus Or in honor of you be still Will I stand Yeah.
Good morning, welcome to Rayleigh Vineyard Live on Easter Sunday, best Sunday of the year. Uh, big thanks to Ali G there for giving us her uh, golden nugget, a fantastic choice, particularly for Easter Sunday. Yeah. Lovely, lovely choice, Ali. So you are the Easter Sunday girl today, aren't you? Uh, if you don't know Ali, Ali is Dave's wife, Dave who leads worship for us on a regular basis. Uh, and she's always been Ali G, even when she wasn't married to Dave, she was Ali Grant. Uh, so she's always been our very own Ali G, uh, who we love dearly. Um, so brilliant. Thanks for that. You can also uh, see that again on YouTube if you want to. If you want to use that worship set, say your kids were a little bit lively this morning. You can watch that uh, for, for your personal delectation when they go to bed tonight. Uh, and this will be replayed on YouTube later as well, this service. Uh, if you miss any of it, if you want to watch it again, uh, it'll weigh up hopefully by six o'clock if we can get our act together. Uh, so fantastic to see you all. Uh, we've got a lovely number today. Fantastic. Really good. Love to see you on Easter Sunday. But of course, there's nothing else to do today. So there's nothing. There's no sport. There's no shops. So why wouldn't you be at it's church? It's the boat race today. Is it really? Yeah. Easter Sunday? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. And it's not in London, is it? It's in, it's in Cambridge, isn't it? Yeah. Or is it Oxford? Cambridge, isn't it? Oh, yeah. no, Ely, isn't it? Yeah. Up in Ely, yes. You have decided to do it uh, in a place there where they can get, you can't go to watch it. There's no crowds in Ely, so... You can't actually go down by the riverside or you get arrested. Uh, so that's the idea today. Uh, so we have got a cartoon coming up for you soon, which Josh is going to queue up uh, in a few seconds. And we've got some notices. And Laura is going to talk uh, our last Sunday sermon on cross-examination. We're going to talk about Jesus today. Then we're going to pray and we're going to do breakout rooms. Uh, and then you can go away for your Sunday lunch and enjoy the rest of your day. It's a much nicer day today. The sun is shining in Rayleigh. It's going to be warmer than the last two days. Not really summer weather, but maybe you can sit in the garden with a, Cut. I don't know, with a, in, in a sleeping bag, <laughs> maybe for 10 minutes before the icicles drip off your nose. And apparently there is snow forecast tomorrow on the East Coast. So that's how bizarre our week of weather has been. Wednesday was the warmest March day for 50, over 50 years and Easter Monday it snows. Isn't it lovely being They're in the UK? They're uh, predicting blizzards in Scotland. Oh, blizzards. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> There you go. Enjoy. <laughs> Good luck to you, Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so, Josh, can we queue up that cartoon, which is about the it's the it all Jesus with a, another Easter story for your delectation. Let's go, shall we? Thanks, Josh. Stories of the Bible. God is with us. This is Jesus. Hey, oh. Jesus is the Savior of the world and the Son of God. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. But some people did not like what Jesus was doing and they put him to death. He died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. For three days, Jesus' body laid in that tomb, and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body, found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! For he was risen, he was alive. Huh? hey -oh. ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. <laughs> he taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. Jesus told his disciples that he did all the things that God had told everyone that he would do, and the disciples understood what he was saying. Yep, that makes sense. He told them that he would send the Holy Spirit, just as God had promised to be their helper. Sounds good. After Jesus had spent 40 days with the disciples and appeared to many people, hey, that's it. he led the disciples to a place called Bethany. Jesus blessed the disciples and told them to go out and tell the whole world about him and the good news of forgiveness and make disciples of them. Then he said, 
Be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Then Jesus was taken into heaven to sit at the right hand of God. Not long after that, the Holy Spirit did come to the disciples to be their helper. The disciples knew that God would truly be with them always. And the Holy Spirit is still with us today, for Jesus promised that He would be with us to the end of the age, and He is. How great is that? It, oh, Jesus, that's the thing you've been missing, isn't it, all week? Uh, you can actually see those on YouTube, if you YouTube Saddleback uh, videos. Uh, I'm just going to call up. This is the bit where I haven't actually asked Josh to do this. So we go back to Swain School, Sunday, the 18th of April. Now, do you just want to talk about this, about what the practicalities are, about whether we can do that or not? How long you got? Um, we are going to send you lots and lots of written information, so I'm not expecting you to remember this. But in the first instance, we are going to meet back um, fortnightly. We're going to go back every other week, first of all. Uh, because there are lots of people who are still quite nervous about meeting in crowds. Um, Swain also don't want too many too soon. Uh, so we're going to do fortnightly initially, uh, up until June, until they hopefully significantly relax the restrictions. Uh, it will be a little bit like when we met at Swain before Christmas. So it will be things like um, you will have to wear masks. You can't really sing. You must uh, turn up exactly 11 o'clock. Yeah, you can't kind of mill around in the building afterwards. But you can go and mill around in the car park because I mean this in the sweetest way. It is then not our problem. Um, you, uh, we can't offer you refreshments. So, But the heart behind this is that we have missed people so much and we think that people have missed each that other. I mean you, we missed <laughs> you. So we want to obviously meet back and kind of ease people in gently but also we want to resume Planet Kids for lots of our children and our young families. So we're going to do that fortnightly and then if that works well we will obviously look to then increase and go back to weekly as soon as feasible. Uh, we will continue to do Zoom on the weeks that we're not in uh, Swain and we'll do Zoom from here, but the weeks we are in Swain, we will also do Zoom from Swain. So if people are not yet ready to come back, you can still uh, attend church because you like this. So uh, we want to make provision for as many people as we can do with our limited capacity, because we are not the BBC with massive outside broadcast <laughs> budgets. Okay, So we're doing our best. We are doing our best. So please bear with us. Uh, now, as always, uh, church is not a spectator sport. It's not the Dave and Laura show. So in order to do church, we're going to need all hands on deck. We need as many people helping as possible. So if you have not served before and you would like to, then drop us an email or a WhatsApp message. Doodle Poll's going out. And today. Doodle Poll is going out as well. If you would like to serve, we want as many people as possible. If you are a parent and you have children that are in Planet Kids, the general expectation is that you would help with Planet Kids. Um, and the more people that help, the less often you have to do it. Um, so that's a really good thing to do as well. Um, so we're going to, we want obviously team to populate uh, the rotor. The rotor in the first instance will be massively stripped back because we things like we don't need a catering team. But if you used to serve on a particular team and that team is currently um, not operational, then please offer to serve in a different capacity um, because it is uh, church is a team sport, not a spectator sport. So, uh, but all of that, I've just gone blah, 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 with loads of information we will send out all of that information. So basically watch this space, but keep an eye on all of your emails, your social media, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, moving Brilliant. swiftly on. Right, auction for Mendes. We have so far raised 1,318 pounds, which is absolutely magnificent. Thank you so much. 
if you bid on Amazing. an item. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much. If you're going to pay us for that, we will get that item to you or we will link you up with the person who is teaching you something or showing you something, or providing a service. Uh, that, mon that amount is still going up and you can obviously still um, uh, sponsor us. Myself and Laura. Laura has finished her 100K cycle. I'm still running my 10K. I've done six so far, six 10, 10, 10 Ks on the trot. Uh, on the past six Saturdays. Um, so you can still sponsor us on that uh, uh, link at the top there. Total Giving, Rayleigh Vineyard, you can go onto that. And also with Vix and Vic and the Walkers. Uh, this is how it turned out. So Vix was way ahead. Uh, Vix Manfield way ahead with the walk because she think did it in something like 10 days, I think. Crazy. But she is super walker. So fantastic. Thanks, Vic. So Vix was victorious. Uh, Silver Sam was in second from South End Vineyard. Uh, she was brilliant. We're going to thank her, uh, just let her know how grateful we are to her. And the Ginger Bonds was Carol. Carol came in third with 100 miles. Well done. Well so, done. Well uh, done. Well done. Well done. Big love also to Paul and Vicky and Rob and Morwenna and Phil and everyone else who did the walk. Uh, people are still walking. Lucy, Jenny and Catherine. And Pete has hobbled into double figures. So a very haphazard, lethargic clap <laughs> for Pete. Wow, and it's we're still a, cycling. We're still cycling, and I'm still running. God, 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 all that stuff. Okay, done that, done that, done that. And things you won't read in the Bible. Here we go. This is from Mock the Week. Uh, I know you turned water into wine, Jesus, but I didn't have a starter, so I should pay less. And Noah did throw his hands up in despair and say, "Where am I expected to find a narwhal?" <laughs> And there was no room at the inn, despite Lenny Henry promising two nights for twenty nine ninety nine. And on the sixth day, God did put a bunch of dinosaur skeletons in the ground and say, that'll confuse them. Uh, last two. And Joseph said, it is a very powerful coat, Father. And one day we'll make a fine musical. And finally, I'm cured, said the leper, laughing his head off. That was a bit sick, that one, wasn't it? That's... I shouldn't, shouldn't have finished that, really, should I? <laughs> right, quick, let's stop sharing uh, cross-examination. The main event, Jesus, is here, and so is my wife. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Okay, okay, just go away. I'll go make a coffee, though. Go away for a few minutes. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. The good thing is, is that Dave has been consistently inappropriate all the way through Zoom. So that's one thing you can definitely rely on. Uh, okay, so really, uh, I'm just going to offer a few thoughts. It's not really a sermon. Uh, it's just a few thoughts that just, uh, it's that kind of, wow, blow my mind moment. And uh some of the things that Ali said just really, really resonated with me. And some of the, like the, certainly the hymns that she chose would make it into my list as well. Fantastic choices, brilliant for Easter day. Uh, and Ali, Ali, bit of a preacher, Ali. So uh, I might be calling on you in the future. Uh, anyway, so this is Matthew 28. Now this is the version. And when I first uh, read this in the message, I thought that uh, there was things in there that I hadn't noticed before. So then I checked it against the NIV and actually it's incredibly similar. So I just obviously have seen things illuminated that I haven't necessarily noticed before. OK, so this is Matthew 28. After the Sabbath. On the first day of the as the as the first light of the new week dawned, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to keep vigil at the tomb. Suddenly the earth reeled and rocked under their feet as God's angel came down from heaven, right came right up to where they were standing. This is the bit I hadn't noticed before. He rolled back the stone and then he sat on it. Shafts of lightning blazed from him. His garments shimmered snow white. The guards at the tomb were scared to death. And the NIV talks about that they were so scared that they looked like dead men. They were so frightened that they couldn't move. The angel spoke to the women. There is nothing to fear here. 
I know that you're looking for Jesus, the one they nailed to the cross. He's not here. He has been raised just as he said. Come and look at the place where he was placed. Now, get on your way quickly and tell the disciples, he is risen from the dead. He is going on ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. That's the message. Wow, that's the message. He is risen from the dead. The last couple of verses say this, the women deep in wonder and full of joy lost no time in leaving the tomb. They ran to tell the disciples. Then Jesus met them, stopping them in their tracks. Good morning, he said. This is, this is the message version. Mm. They fell to their knees, embraced his feet and worshipped him. Jesus said, you are holding on to me for dear life. Don't be frightened like that. Go tell my brothers that they are to go to Galilee and I will meet them there. But the bit that really uh, struck me, the bit in verse seven, this the angel speaking to the women. Tell the disciples he is risen from the dead. He's gone on ahead of you. You will see him there. That is the message. And that's the message of Easter morning. It's the best day of the year. Jesus is risen. He's alive. And uh, as you read that, and as I read that to you this morning, either the writers of the gospel, and this, that was Matthew, uh, have got a crazy active imagination, or they're having some kind of hallucination, or they're a bit nuts, and they have written the most fanciful, ridiculous tale, or it's true. And that's what we're faced with this morning. You either read that and think that's like a fairy story, or you read that and you think that is true. And if you decide it's true, it changes everything. And that's why Easter morning is a game changer. It's a game changer for every single person that hears it and accepts it and knows that it's true. Because if you accept that Jesus died on a cross and was put in the tomb and dead for three days or 48 hours or whatever, regardless of however long it was, the fact that he was die, he was dead and then raised to life, the time actually, you know, the most important thing is that he came back to life. He was risen from the dead. If we believe that that's true, then it is a game changer because our sins are forgiven. Because of what he did, we are free. Because of what he did, the fear of death is gone. We are free to have that relationship with our heavenly father. On the Alpha course, it talks about that the cross essentially creates a bridge. Jesus creates the bridge between us in our sinful nature and the heavenly father. And because of what Jesus did on the cross, the power of the cross, we can then have that free, uninhibited, open relationship with our heavenly father because of what Jesus did. Easter, quite simply, is a game changer. And that's why we worship. That's why we spend lots of time thinking about our favourite wor uh, worship songs. That's why, as the weeks have gone on with the Golden Nugget, people have really thought about the lyrics and really thought about why does that song just captivate me? That's why we worship, because of what Jesus achieved on the cross, because he conquered death on the cross. Quite simply, we worship because he is worth it. 
it's all about him. It's all for him. And we've said it before. Um, it's all about him because he's done it all already. He's done it all for us already. And if it is then a game changer, like I have said, if Easter Day is a game changer, if this is really, really true, if this fanciful tale actually is fact, then it should change how we live every single day. Not just on Easter Day, but every single day. Because you wake up every single day and every single day is new. His mercies are new every day. You are free you are forgiven, you are accepted, you are approved of, you're a new creation, you have a purpose, you have a destiny. It talks in the Old Testament in Jeremiah that God has a plan for you, a good and perfect plan. All of those things are available. If you read this account and accept that it's true, because you now have the, op the opportunity to be in a real, vital, vibrant relationship with the living God. And the other thing that is just, for me, when I think about it, is completely astonishing, is that when Jesus was raised from the dead, the Holy Spirit that filled him and breathed life back into him and raised him from the dead, that's the same Holy Spirit that we have in us every single day. And I think sometimes we forget that. We forget just how powerful that is. So my question this morning to every single person who's listening to this is, if that's true, what are you going to do about it? How is your life going to be different? Now, I became a Christian on Easter day. And I think, I think it was 28 years ago. So I'm a little bit behind Ali. Uh, so I'm not as wise and mature as Ali. But um, for me, it's my, it's my birthday today. It's my Christian birthday because I have become a new creation. And boy, is that worth celebrating every single day new opportunities. Every single day, I'm forgiven. Every single day, I wake up with God's uh, gaze on me with approval. And that's not just true for me. That is true for every single person. We've had a couple of messages come in from our prophetic team. And uh, this is uh, one that I just want to read to you which I think is just brilliant uh, it really is amazing grace like the worship song we can sing it and almost not kind of take that on but it really is amazing grace because God loves you regardless of what you've done and what you're going to do. And he saved a wretch like me, like you. You know, his grace is sufficient. It is not just sufficient grace. It's amazing, overflowing, incredible, wonderful grace. That's what's on offer to you every single day. So in a slightly provocative way, what are you going to do with it? So I'm going to pray. David, do you want to join me? One, two. <laughs> so, um, happy Easter. Because of what Jesus has done, mm. this is the best day ever. This is the best day ever for you. And all of those invitations from God are available for you this morning. And I just want to pray that uh, some of you have heard that lots and lots of times before, but I pray that it would be revealed to you in a brand new way. And you're like, wow, wow, 
that's an amazing invitation from God. And I want to run at it with both hands. I want to seize it. I want to grab the opportunity. And some of you have never heard that before. Because of the power of the cross, because of what Jesus did, because of the way he endured the cross and then conquered death, overcame death, came back to life for you, for you, there is amazing opportunities available for you. And I just pray that for every single person, that would now be a real truth in your head, in your heart, in your spirit, and it would become a game changer for you that something would shift in your mind and in your heart and in your spirit. And you'd be like, wow, yeah, I want to live differently because of what Jesus has done for me. So calm Holy Spirit, calm Holy Spirit. There's a couple of people listening in can hear what I'm saying. You've never made that step. You've never made that kind of, I really want to follow Jesus. And this is a fantastic opportunity to do exactly that on Easter Sunday, 2021, to make that decision and say, Jesus, I want to follow you. Jesus, I want to just now my colours to your mask, to your cross and say, I'm going to do this now, Lord. You've been wanting to do it for ages. And now is the chance to actually do that, to actually say, I'm yours, Jesus. And we're going to go forward on this. We're going to work this one out and we're going to do this together. So why don't you do that this morning? Why don't you say to Jesus, I'm yours, Lord. For the first time, I'm going to actually follow you and I'm going to mean this and I'm going to do this. I feel like it's time to actually, you know, go for this. I've, um, I'm going to procrastinate no more and I'm going to choose you. I've heard another word come through saying that um, Jesus was mistaken as the gardener by Mary, uh, but that wasn't a mistake. You know, a, a gardener tends seeds, um, weeds the garden, waters it. Uh, and there's a sense that um, someone needs to let Jesus be their gardener to take care of them. Mm. You know, the way a gardener loves the garden. You know, so if, you, if we talk about having green fingers, Jesus had green fingers for us. The Holy Spirit has green fingers for our lives, for our hearts. And to let Jesus take care, to be, to be the one to weed, water and help grow them in your journey with God. So maybe you've got to, you want to recommit today. You want to say, oh lord i just had a really rubbish pandemic i've had a really rubbish 2021 and i just want to recommit my life to you and say i'm going to go for it now jesus mm. because the christian life is about giving it all not just a little bit not just sunday mornings not just half an hour of worship you know one day in the week or a couple of bible verses you read giving it all he wants it from 24 7 from the day you the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep and then beyond that so yeah. now's the time to say i'm going to throw my lot in now jesus I'm going, to, I'm, put, I'm going to put all my Easter eggs in one basket this morning. <laughs> yeah, just as Dave was saying that, I'd had exactly the same sense in mm. that there are some people here and you love Jesus and you, you profess to be a Christian, but there's particular areas of your life that you haven't quite relinquished control mm. of and you really want to follow God, but maybe not in that area. Or, or I really trust you, God, with this, this and this, but not that. And it could be uh, a particular area of worry. It could be your finances, could be your children. It could be um, your health. It could be a work situation. There's just an area that it seems to occupy too much of your headspace. And I think it's because you're trying to sort it out. And God's saying, give, give me that bit as well. Give me that bit. So if that's something and you're thinking, oh, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I, I, I know Laura's talking about me. Then I just encourage you just to bring that particular issue before God and just say, help me with this, God. Help me. And, and quite often we kind of, you know, with really good intentions, we give it to God and then we try and take it back. And then we give it to God and we try and take it back. And I, the invitation is, is this morning, again, to give it to God and try and leave it with him. Try and leave it with him and see what he'll do with it. So, Lord, if that, uh, if that resonates with anyone, I just pray that you would help them to give that area of concern over to you and to leave it with you, God. Leave it with you. 
And I just pray, God, that when they try and pick it up again and try and sort it out for themselves, you would help them. You would help them. Calm, Holy Spirit. Calm, Holy Spirit. And this morning, just as I was thinking about, um, I was kind of looking at the weather, actually, and thinking, I wonder if it's going to be warm enough to see me. I know that some people are maybe getting an, another family over today because you're allowed to have two households in a family today in the garden, only in the garden. But thinking, you know, some of you are going to be spending Easter Day with people who have never met Jesus. And I wonder if you will have the courage just to say, do you know what, I was listening to this crazy woman this morning on Zoom. Beautiful woman. <clears throat> oh, thanks. Uh, and she was talking about this story. And do you know what? I think it's true. What do you think about it? I wonder if there's, you know, opportunity this afternoon to share that with people on Easter Day who don't know Jesus. Thank you, God. Right. OK, we're going to go to our final song in a sec. Uh, rooftop song. Uh, you are free to leave at this point if you want to. Uh, or you can hang around for the breakout rooms and we'll pray some more. You can let us know if you want to, that you've made a decision for God today. You want to stay in the breakout rooms and uh, make it public to somebody. That's a great way to do it because it really sets it in stone, sets it in concrete. If you've made that decision today to actually say, I'm going to do this now and I want someone to know about it because then we can know and we can pray for you. And we can help you through that. Um, so we're going to go to the um, last song in a sec. So we're going to pray first and then Josh is going to key that up. So thank you so much for being with us today. Just to remind you that we're back at Swain on the 18th. Next Sunday, we're out on YouTube. And the following week, we're back at Swain. We'll give you loads of information about that between now and then. Um, unless, of course, the government changes things. So two weeks today, we are back at Swain School if you want to join us. Uh, and we'll give you the details about that. Thanks so much for um, coming to see us today. Happy Easter, all. David sent us a message and we're returning that to you saying happy Easter, have a lovely day and a lovely afternoon uh, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done for us today and everything you've done for us for the past 2,000 years and beyond. And we love you, Lord. And we just want to uh, just thank you for Easter and thank you for all that represents to us in our hearts. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Your love is bigger than my fear. You hold me close when the storm appears. You are with me to the end. Your strength will rise in me again. You awaken the song. You are faithful all night long So I sing from the rooftop You always fight for me You're the fortress that I run to The rock beneath my feet And I will not be shaken I will not be moved When all around is changing I will trust in you
When all around is changing, I will trust in you.